Ladies and gents, boys and girls, here she is. The Artillery Sidewinder X1. Let's take a look. So Artillery sent this to me a little while ago, and I'm gonna be honest, I was slacking, getting prepped to move. Anyway, this is probably the, uh, the other, I can't even say second, but the other highest recommended 3D printer when getting into cosplay props and all of this bigger stuff because of its build volume. Don't worry, I'm safe, this is a real fake knife. Um, yeah, it, you'll always see the C Creality CR-10S or the CR-10S V2 or the Pro, but you'll always also see the Artillery Sidewinder X1. Um, this is the V4 version. And when they reached out to me, I kind of thought it was like a scam email, I'm gonna be honest. And uh, then the printer showed up. I'm like, oh my God, it was real, that's awesome. So we're gonna crack this open. I am excited to see this because oh, tons of you recommend it. I mean, I, I honestly recommend it too. I don't see bad things about it. It's just, it's the, it's the Chevy to the Ford. You know, it's just another brand. So yeah, let's get her open, unbox her, take a look and see how it goes. The size of this instruction manual just scared the hell out of me, but it's it's all in a bunch of different languages, so that much is in English. Cool. So right out of the box, first impressions, it's built pretty nicely. However, there's no uh, test filament or nippers for cutting the filament, so you'd also have you'd have to get this and then get filament to even get off your first test print. Not the biggest fan of that, but that's whatever, you save money or however you want to look at that. Um, so I'm gonna have to go grab some filament from the other room, but construction seems pretty cool. It's got a dual extrusion bar, uh, aluminum extrusion bar for the entire X axis. The hot end is really complicated looking and I like it. Um, aside from that, not too many spare parts at all. It's the, the assembly of this seems like it's pretty much going to be identical to the uh, like CR-10S Pro V2 or any of the other all-in-one system printers. So let's get started. <laughs> it tells you to cut things, but it doesn't give you something to cut them with. fact we'll talk about the printer in a second this is only rated for 220 volts which means unlike some other printers that I have fr I frequently deal with you can only get the European slash UK version or the uh, American or Japanese version so I won't be able to take this back to the States with me hmm that's very interesting that's unfortunate too I kind of wanted to keep this one and play around with it more. But uh, yeah, there's no point to switch over the to the voltage because there's no way to do that. Anyway, assembly, super easy. That, 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 took, that took 10 minutes and I was kind of taking my time. Not even 10 minutes, that was quicker than that. Yeah, gantry goes on, four bolts go into the bottom, make sure that's lined up. You Look for all of the tape. As you start to remove pieces of tape that are placed around the printer, you're gonna notice it's gonna reveal, reveal plugs. You're gonna plug into the back right here, onto your Z motors. Um, it has a dual, it has a Z uh, alignment, a Z sync band at the top. That's really awesome. I have never had a printer actually come with that. That's really cool. Installing the filament holder. This is also a very unique filament holder. Never dealt with a bearing system like this. Make sure you put it inside the belts. Don't like pinch the belts onto the frame. That'll make sense once you're assembling this. I'm not the biggest fan of the um, the way the filament holder sits on top with the bearings because if you have a, fil a, a roll of filament that's wider or narrower, like Amazon Basics is like twice as wide as this, you're going to need to go and loosen it every time. But if you're using the same filament all the time, the same brand over and over, that won't be a problem at all. Very simple to install. Um, yeah, remove the tape. It uses ribbon cables. It uses, uh, there's a name for these flat ribbons. I don't know what it is specifically, but you typically see them inside electronics a lot for LCD screens and stuff. Be careful when installing them. You're going to have to plug one into your whole extruder system right here. It's, it plugs into the side. It's taped to the side rail here. And then there's one tape down here. 
that uh, plugs into the actual base of the printer. So be very careful with those, don't pitch them, but the way it, it does move and fold in with the printer as it moves, I'm a fan of that, that looks pretty cool. So let's get this plugged in, we'll power it on and see how it looks. Also, something to note when actually reading the instructions, read the instructions. It even talks about the eccentric nuts right here. What are eccentric nuts? They're these little um, hexagonal nuts that sit on the back of your roller wheels that help tighten the gantry and the bed to the frame. Learn what these are and how to fix them. Or you can completely ignore the instructions and go post on a Facebook group in a week when everything's loose and you don't know why you didn't follow the reading instructions. Whatever floats your boat, you pick. All right, the control system seems pretty simple. We have print, there's nothing in there, so that's not gonna do anything quite yet. Uh, we have settings, file. So we can, oh, we can choose to go between micro USB and micro SD. That's pretty neat. Artillery, oh, it has Wi-Fi. Okay, fan, continue printing. Uh, we can disable the stepper motor so we can move the printer around safely. Tools, what do we got here? We can heat the extruder. All right, let's start heating this up. Um, oh, the bed, what is this? E1, oh yeah, extruder and bed, okay. 40, okay, let's, uh, well, that goes up kind of slow. Let's do, 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 we'll do 200, okay? And then we can heat up the bed. We'll heat up the bed to 60. I like 260 for test prints. We can close. Oh, okay, so that just turns it off. All right, so we'll do that. 200, all right, we're heating up. We're heating up for the first time. Extruder, we can move. So we're gonna auto home for the first time. Change filament more. There's an LED. Ooh, it's a black, it's a black light. I'm kidding, it's just, it's just off. All right, let's auto home it for the first time. Now like all printers, it should go up, move over, move back, move down. If it's out of that order, something's hooked up wrong, but I can't imagine how you would hook anything wrong up on this. All right, the nozzle seems to be in a good spot. Let's go through and level this bed real quick. There's actually a leveling feature, so let's check that. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. So it gives us little leveling points. So it auto homes, goes to point one, point two, that's super quick. So to level the bed, what we're gonna aim for is you go to each point and we're gonna take a post-it note and we're gonna try to slip it under the nozzle. You want to barely feel the friction of the paper scraping the nozzle. Like you, you can feel it rubbing, but it's not getting stuck. So we're gonna go through and do that in all four corners and then the center and we'll get to our first print. Also, make sure you do this while the printer is warmed up and heated. Metal expands when it's hot. Your nozzle is gonna change just a little bit and your bed, eh, it shouldn't really make too much of a difference, but it's always a good idea. Heat everything up while you're leveling the bed. So right there, I can barely feel the paper scraping the nozzle. And that's exactly what I want. And that right there is a perfectly level bed. When I go to the center, I can feel the exact same friction that I was feeling around the entire printer. We're perfect, good to go. Let's try our first print. So I'm pretty confident that it's leveled. We're gonna take the USB stick, throw it in, and see if there's any files on the, uh, on the stick. And there should be, I can't imagine there's not, so. No files found, check the system configuration. Oh, uh, do we have to change how it reads it? We do. Okay, make sure you go in and change it if you have to. Hey, there we go, files, cube, and we're printing. Filament detection switch not pressed. Oh, because I didn't load the filament up. Shh, are you just gonna beep the whole time? If you're ever having trouble getting filament through the filament runout sensor on any printer, cut it at a 45 degree angle and straighten it out with your fingers as much as possible. It'll help. And then we're gonna feed it down into there. All right, we have some filament loaded. Let's, uh, I guess we can hit resume. But here we go. And within, what was that? 15 minutes while recording a video, build to first print, that's not bad. And we'll see how it comes out. Um, it said it's a cube and it's already looking cube shaped. The extruder is so big, it's hard to get my finger in. Yeah, that's yeah, sticking pretty good. Now let's see what options we have for on the fly adjustments. Um, let's see, more. Fan, light, you can turn the light on and off. Speed, extrude, move speed, move back one, add, extrude, move. So the one thing it doesn't have, unless I'm crazy and I just can't find it, it doesn't have any type of baby Z-step option. So I can't go in there and actively lift and lower the nozzle while it's printing. That's fine though, as long as your bed's level properly, this will never be a problem but we're printing away. Neat. We're gonna let this go for a little bit and uh, yeah, we'll see how it comes out. First test print on the X1. 
perfect success. This came out great. The only little snafu was right here. You might be able to barely see it at the beginning. You can see there's a little um, over extrusion because I unplugged the printer and literally carried it out of the room, put it somewhere else to finish the print and it print resumed perfectly. So power loss recovery works great. Um, I'm not gonna sit here and beat this printer up. There's already tons and tons of videos of people doing that, full length, hours, days long prints of review. Um, this is just, I, I know this is a good printer. This isn't so much uh, me trying to disprove that. Plenty of people have this. This is just the opposite side of the Creality Pro V2s that I usually, uh, I, have, I am fond of because that's what I'm just used to. If you entered the hobby with this, you'd be just as well off and I have no complaints about this printer at all. It's just a little different, a couple different parts and features. And uh, yeah, it seems like a pretty solid piece of tech. I am gonna start printing bigger stuff with it and you'll see that around my channel, you'll see that on Instagram, you'll see that on TikTok and in future videos. I do plan to do this in a direct competition with the CR10S Pro V2. Make them print the same thing and just kind of see what quality I can get out of both of them. Um, this doesn't have auto leveling like a BL Touch. That is one downside, but it is a little bit cheaper. So. Who knows? This printer does have a Cura profile. I like Cura, it's free, it works, I'm happy with it. Um, artillery is in there, so all you have to do is go select it. It is a pretty expansive uh, uh, printer profile setup in Cura. This printer's been around for a while, so they've had plenty of times to adjust and tweak it and get all those settings right. So you can download Cura, input this, and get right to printing. Thank you again, Artillery, for sending me this. Um, I, I, I'm actually very surprised you did because I'm obviously a Creality fan, but I'm not exclusive to them. I love testing out new printers and seeing what else is out there and giving you guys other options. This is a good printer. There's I have nothing bad to say about this thing at all. It, it works. It feels like an absolutely solid machine, and as the forums and uh, the rest of the internet seem to uh, have a good approval of it. So definitely take a look at, at it if this is in your wheelhouse. I'll leave a link for it down below, and if you guys could, maybe subscribe if you haven't already. I have a lot more printer reviews coming out. I have a lot more build tutorials and series and all that fun stuff coming out. So please, if you could subscribe, it would really help the channel out. If you want more in the meantime, please go check out the Discord. There's a link for that down below. Plenty of people in my Discord do have artillery uh, style printers. So if you ever need help with them, questions, concerns, upgrades, I'm sure somebody in there can help you. It's a free Discord, about 4,000 members, so why wouldn't you join? So thank you so much for watching, guys, and you have a good day.